Welcome to the Daily Word verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Colossians. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. Also keep in mind that these verse by verse studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel, BP The Bible Perspective. That's BP The Bible Perspective. So like and share these videos and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. Okay, we are in the Colossians. Got a little, we had a little intro in the last video. And um, I want to make one more statement before we move on to, to verse 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, everything that Paul is going to say, especially in these first two chapters, in fact, everything Paul says is going to have a direct connection to his main thought. And we're going to pick up on this as we move through the letter. The reason why it's important because uh, oftentimes our Bible study habits is we zero in on a passage and then we rob ourselves of what, why was Paul saying this? In other words, why is Paul making these statements? And that's why I want to bring that to our minds as we move forward. Now, verse 3 says, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Excuse me. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. You have already heard about this hope in the message of the gospel and the truth, in the message of truth, the gospel that has come to you it is bearing fruit and growing all over the world just as it has among you since the day you have heard it and recognized God's grace in the truth. You learned this from Epaphras, our dearly, uh, dearly loved fellow slave. He is a faithful servant of the Messiah on your behalf. And he has told us about your love in the Spirit. Now, one of the things we know at least two churches that at the time of this writing, and by the way, remember this is later on in Paul's life, probably towards the end of his life, that he personally didn't start, Colossians is one of them, and then Romans is believed to be another one, where we know that at the time of the Romans writing, he had not visited the church. Now he, he visited Rome, but he was in chains. Uh, but uh, he hadn't he heard about this church. <clears throat> we will see in the next chapter, he confirms this because the statements here, yes, it, it, it could be interpreted just, just Paul just hearing about their faith. Both are complementary to this church. In other words, when he says, hey, we've heard about you. We've heard about you. What reputation does your church have? Think about that. As a body of believers, as a congregation, what is your reputation? Notice he says here, Paul, uh, Paul says, hey, we've heard about your faith and your love. And by the way, <laughs> let me just say those are the two commands that Jesus gave. Remember, the, the only two commands that Jesus gave was to believe on him and to love one another. And notice Paul is complimenting this church on fulfilling and doing that command, that their faith in Christ, and then that faith is expressed in their love for the saints. And notice, love for the saints. This is right out of John. You know, um, Jesus said in John chapter 13 that uh, the world will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. How we fail that in many cases. Now, he says here, back, notice Paul is praying for them, and which is kind of, again, in prison. Paul is making these prayers. He's praying for this church. Epaphras tells Paul, Paul Epaphras is some type of servant of Paul, by the way, ministering to Paul, while Paul is in chain, 
The jail system in Rome is a little different because if you if you go back to the book of Acts, at one point Paul was able to be on some type of house confinement and, uh, and basically they kept a guard with him, but he was able to have liberty um, that he could have people come and minister to him, visit him. Uh, of course, there were the more severe incarcerations when you was chained and you didn't have any type of liberty. So Paul had some type of liberty. And Epaphra was one of those who ministered to Paul. But he also was from the Colossian church, as well as the Laodicean church and the Hierapolis, uh, Hierapolis uh, cities, congregation. And he's telling Paul about these churches. And so Paul, again, writes this letter. So he says, because of the hope... By the way, it's believed that even Epaphras, Epaphras might have even started this congregation and, and, and in some type of way ministered to this congregation. But notice what he said, for we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. And that's, that's just the, the, the hope, this hope reserved. I, I want to, again, notice the, 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 the language. We're not... A, Obtaining this. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, and we're going to get into this more, why this statement is so true, that it's already reserved for us in heaven. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. So he says, you have heard this about this, you have heard about this, this hope in the message of truth, the gospel. So the Gospel message. You should have been. You should be taught this. By the way, this is what you should be taught. I'm. Oh, anyway. Then he says, <clears throat> it, it has come unto you, and is now bearing fruit, and then growing all over the world. Now, the term "world" here should be defined in the context of the Roman Empire. Okay, so it's bearing fruit all over the world, and he says, just as it is among you. In other words, the gospel at the time was growing. Believe it or not, uh, from Paul's perspective, it was growing. From the world perspective, the Christianity, um, was the, it, it was a growing sect. People were becoming aware of it. But it's, it, it's, it was nowhere near the world dominance that Christianity have today, in terms of the thought. The, 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 the. So he said, you've learned this from Epaphras. Um, you, he says... Um, Verse 6 again, it's come to you and it's bearing fruit and growing all over the world just as it has among you since the day you've heard and recognized the grace in the truth. So the, the, this is a progression that I think ministry always should, there always should be a, move, a, a, a forward movement in ministry. Preaching the gospel, it bearing fruit in salvation. And then that other fruit is that it is, it, it's just, I put it like this, let me, let me back up. The preaching of the gospel should, should plant salvation, and that salvation should bear fruit of believing and loving the saints, loving one another. So, you're constantly, um, you're constantly, in a sense, growing in your faith, but that should be, that growth should be in ministry, and it also should be in loving and service. So he said, you've learned this from Epaphras, um, our fellow slave, and he is a faithful servant in the Messiah on your behalf, and he has told us about your love and spirit. So that's how this letter came about. This letter came about by a faithful slave, and notice the term slave. And um, the Christian church oftentimes would adapt terminology, okay? Um, um, Christians, for example, with a term of, uh, with a derogatory term. And so they said, fine, I'm a Christ follower. Yes. And the same thing, if you say that I'm a slave, I'm a slave of Christ. This was a term, and even though, as we're going to see, that they're heirs of God, we're heirs of God and joined heirs of Christ, that they would often say, but, but I am a slave, that I am a bond slave, on top of that, to serve Christ. I am committed. I am sold out <laughs> to serve Christ. 
All right, I'm going to pick it up at verse 9 in the next video, so I will see you then.